So Alex, for our audience at home, please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your film. Hi, my name's uh, Alex Galvin. I'm a writer director based in uh, New Zealand. Um, so uh, this is my film is uh, The Turn of the Screw, which is an adaptation of the uh, classic Henry James short story. Henry James, the famous American British novelist, um, he wrote the first ever ghost story in 1896, uh, The Turn of the Screw, which is about an, an English governess looking after two orphan children in a remote country mansion in England. And uh, this governess begins to suspect that the previous a governess who has passed away, that her ghost is actually fighting to uh, take over the souls of the children. And so she begins a battle of wits with uh, this mysterious governess who may or may not be real. And I've always loved the story and I've loved the atmosphere and I've loved some of the adaptations that have been done. And, um, and let's say The Woman in Black is very much inspired by that. The Innocence is a great adaptation. Um, but I had an idea of doing my own idea of it, which was uh, set entirely in a theatre because sometimes it's made into a play. And I had an idea that, an, uh, that it's the night before opening night of the turn of the screw being turned into a brand new play production. And um, the lead actress has mysteriously stepped down. And so a replacement has been flown in uh, to cover, and her name's uh, Julia. And um, she arrives at 11 o'clock that night. She meets the director and he says, we're gonna do a dress rehearsal just for you. No, no audience, no nothing, just so you get a feel for everything. But a few weird things might happen, but you know, just go with it. And so she instantly she begins to get into immerse herself in the role, but then other weird things start to happen that are not expected. So just like in the character, the governess, uh, our character Julia begins to suspect that not all is as it seems. So what it's a, a story within the story. What do you love about this story? I mean, you said this is one of your favorite stories of all time. What do you love about it? What about it touches you? I think the thing that fascinates so many people is the ambiguity and there's been lots of like PhD theses written on it and so forth and it has this incredible sense of atmosphere but there's this Henry James is an absolute genius at writing a sentence with two different uh, meanings and so many people can take their own uh, interpretations of it and I think that the it's a it was the first one actually dealing with that feeling of um, isolation uh, in, a, in a remote setting and also having children is such a, fun, a key part of the story. And it's been done so much since um, that it's, it's, some people feel it almost feels cliche, but if you go back to the original, it's interesting to see how we did that. And the original, though, it's not an easy read. I think the first sentence is the longest in English literature. It goes on for like half a page. So it's definitely something that needs some updating um, to, uh, to help with it now. Um, but uh, it's funny how these things sort of, you know, I was interested in, there's just been obviously the Netflix adaptation of it as well. There's been another feature film. So it's just one of those sort of uh, inherent stories. And I think there's something about, you know, um, a woman looking after children and trying to save children, um, which is, is deeply embedded in all of us, you know, about that nurturing and, and, and wanting to help and save. So I guess that's, uh, that's some of the reasons I, I find it interesting. When did you film this, this film? Uh, so we shot it actually uh, back in late 2018, so um, quite a while ago, and then it was in post-production, then we were ready to release, and then COVID came along, and uh, basically well, this, sort of stopped everything for a little while. That's what I wanted to bring up. So, you know, we went through COVID, you shot this before COVID, but we went through COVID, and like you said, the theme of isolation. Mm. How, how do you think you, you captured the theme of isolation now going through it yourself, you know, with the COVID lockdowns and everything. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I think that um, it's. I think everyone has sort of come, you know, could probably um, um, identify with the film in different ways. Now that we've all been through this thing of all being in our own little bubbles, you know, for so long and feeling slightly isolated from the outside world. Um, I guess the benefits now, obviously, we you know we can talk to each other and things which obviously weren't around then. Um, but I think that that feeling that uh, isolation can always be so close to us and with us. And even like in the film where she's on set and there are people around her, she feels our lead feels completely isolated because she doesn't know what's going on. So isolation can work in a physical sense, but it can also work in an emotional sense as well. Talk to me about your set. I really love your set a lot. You know, when when I talk with filmmakers all the time at these film festivals, they're like, yeah, we had, you know, you know, five different locations. I had to pull permits. It costs a lot of money, but also too, shooting one or two, you know, sceneries is a lot, is more difficult, I think. So talk to me a little bit about that. Sure. So we, um, 
the film is actually two different locations, even though it's set in theatre. We only actually had a theatre for three hours. So we shot the entire thing on a soundstage in, in Wellington and we blacked it out and actually created the, the feeling of the black set. And from that, we could, we could control the lighting, we could do everything. And so all the different scenes, the kitchen was first up, then the outside, then the bedroom. We would spend like two or three days in the kitchen, then change everything around do all the outside, then do all the bedrooms. And so the actors had to go back and forth. It was quite tough for them emotionally. And we had all, all our shots listed and planned that we went through. And then um, we had a, we went to this a Wellington Opera House in Wellington, New Zealand, which is one of, one of the beautiful old theatres built in the 1890s. And um, we had I had a list of all the shots I needed to get there. So that's the intro bits. And then all her point of view shots, looking around the theatre, because it's so beautiful, um, shooting up in the box. Um, so all of that was done um, six weeks later. And then, because I knew all the bits that we needed to add in to the film. So it was done with very careful planning there because I was scared with, a, with it being, <clears throat> excuse me, a, um, a feature film. I didn't want it to feel like a filmed theatre production. So that, you know, we start with a few shots like this, but I really wanted to get in with the actors, see their points of view as the lights are like burning into them and to get that real feeling of cin uh, that cinematic feeling and that feeling of depth as well. Um, but our production designer, Debbie Fish, did an amazing job because... It's interesting when you've, it might seem easier when you have a limited, uh, minimal set, but it means that you have to make every decision the right one. Because if you get the wrong set piece, it sticks out. You know, you can't hide it amongst things. So we were very, very specific that every little bit that was in those shots uh, was of the period, worked for the, the palette of what we were going for, the, uh, the color palette, the visual sense and look of the film. So uh, a huge amount of work and planning was done with that. And then with our cinematographer too, Mark Papali'i, we worked through all the shots and a real um, visual, so it doesn't feel visually the same. It keeps, you know, it keeps us interested. I think you succeeded in that because the, the film to me was so intimate and it didn't feel like mm. it was all filmed in the theater or that type of setting. So Thank I, you. That's great. You, you, you know That's what we aim for. Head. So <laughs> thank you so much. Talk to me about your cast. I mean, your cast, you know, the story is great, the this, this scenery is great, but your cast is so wonderful. So where did you find your cast and how did they feel about getting into that period piece? Because doing period piece is kind of hard because we're living in a technological te te technological world. So tell me about that. Absolutely. Um, sorry, my wife's just giving me a cup of coffee to keep me going. <laughs> That's fine. Um, um, yeah, so... Look, I wouldn't have done this film if I didn't have the actors to do it because when you have such a small group of actors in such an intimate setting, you have to have every one of your actors nail it or it's going to stick out. So um, that was the big, you know, that was, I thought, when I was initially thinking about doing this, I thought I've got to get the right actors. And it started obviously with the lead, Julia, and I'd known her, Greer Phillips, who's a wonderful actress here. And she's, she's had a lot of experience in both theatre and film, which is what I needed. I needed someone who could do both. Um, and she's incredibly bright, really lovely to deal with. She got the idea straight away. And uh, Jane uh, Waddell, who plays Mrs. Gross, she's considered like theatre royalty here in New Zealand. She's, she's, been, um, she's an incredibly well-respected actress and, and hasn't actually done a lot of film for quite a while. She used to do quite a bit. And she's mainly just been focusing on theatre. And um, she's our one of our like Helen Mirrens, you might say, or, or Judy Dent. Um, so uh, to have to have her was um, uh, a real honour. And a lot of the actors like Greer was just so in awe of like being able to work with Jane as well. And those two like did a lot of rehearsal together, and just sort of bounced off each other. Um, and then for the two children, um, we went through uh, what's called Rata Studios, which is like a, a major child acting uh, place here and uh, training place here in, in New Zealand. And um, we auditioned, you know, over 200 children. And um, Ella and, um, and Alex were by far and away the best. And um, they, we just needed to get the kids right. And again, they, they're lovely children. They're super bright. Their parents are both all great as well and supportive. And they look great together. They look like they could be brother and sister. And they, uh, you know, they interacted well together. And so once we had them and then um, Ben and Sarah, uh, playing the ghosts I've known them both for a long time and they both actually have done stunt work as well and they've done dancing because they don't say a lot those characters I needed them to really act with their bodies um, and Ralph Johnson who plays the director he was in my previous film Eternity and I he played a Sherlock Holmes character and he's he's just got a wonderful voice wonderful face and I just I actually wrote that that part with Ralph in mind I just thought that is just made for him and he's just such a nicest guy in real life so having to play like a bit of a 
a bit of a bastard was, um, you know, as soon as he'd say the line, he'd be like, oh, that's so mean. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he needs to get out of his own comfort zone. So um, what did you learn about yourself personally and professionally while making this film? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think this is my third film. I think it's definitely my best film. I feel I've learned a lot from the previous ones. So I, my first film was a very small, intimate film that did, that did pretty well. And then um, my second film, Eternity, was a much bigger sci-fi mystery film that we shot in New Zealand and Hong Kong with like 45 different locations. And um, uh, it's, I'm very proud of the film, uh, but it was, you know, I did have to make a lot of compromises for budget. And um, I've sort of at this stage, I only really want to do films now that I don't have to compromise with my artistic vision too much. You know, comp every film you make compromises, that's right. the nature of the beast. But there comes a line where you don't sort of want to cross and i i've been had two or three other films in development for quite a while and i'm, I'm working on a, a much bigger hopefully fingers crossed a much bigger film next but i was lecturing at the uh, at a university here in new zealand and i had access to a lot of the equipment a lot of the uh facilities and i actually knew that i could do this very quickly and very inexpensively and so i think what i learned about myself is that um that uh, I, I, I could only really, I really have to make sure that I don't like leap too far if I don't have all the bits in place, you know? So I, I embraced that this was a small film and I like leant into that, you know, and pushed the claustrophobia of it, pushed all that. So rather than try to pretend it's a multi-million dollar, you know, big budget horror movie, um, I embraced what it was and, um, and I feel that that was the, the right way to do it. And so, but the other thing I've learned uh, over the years is I'm, you know, I'm in my mid forties now. I only like working with people that I get on with and that I like and respect. I, I believe firmly in a really friendly, happy, supportive set and crew. And um, the most talented people I've met are all very humble, very generous and very supportive. So um, I, I only really want to work now with, with people like that. Um, and I feel that that produces much better artistic quality at the end of it. And life is too short, you know, life is exactly. too short. Exactly, exactly. You know, when, when COVID, you know, COVID is not completely over with, but hopefully it'll be soon. You know, tell me about the film industry in New Zealand. Why should filmmakers from Texas, where we are right now, why should they come to New Zealand to film? Oh, and well, New Zealand is, um, we've been, look, we've been really lucky with COVID. So basically we don't have any COVID in this country at all. Um, travel is a little bit trickier as a result. So if you yeah, if that's you came what I to mean. Zealand, we just, you yeah. can't just come and visit now. You know, there's a little trickiness. No, you you do a, a two week. You spend two weeks in a hotel, uh, which is quite. I would tell you, she's quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I mean, New Zealand. Uh, we have amazing film crews, great actors, um, and there's a lot of uh, financial benefits. So it's forty percent government rebate, which basically means, let's say you spend ten million dollars on a movie. I'm being very generalistic here, though. If you invest that money in New Zealand, the government guarantees like $4 million of that $10 million back. Wow. Because the amount that goes in, you know, for, um, uh, for the economy and so forth is so. And that's why, that's one of the reasons Avatar. So basically James Cameron shooting Avatar 2 to 6 or something like that currently in Wellington. Peter Jackson is based here, obviously. There's a new Lord of the Rings series that um, uh, Prime is doing. Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt is in Wellington right now doing a film. So um, we're the, also, we're very lucky. It's a small country, you know, Texas, you know, um, such a massive state. If you're wanting to get like a river, a river seat shot and then a mountain shot and then a city shot, you're going to have to travel quite long distances. We can go half an hour up the road and you can get all three. So um, and awesome. I've brought people, yeah. I lived in LA for quite a bit and I, I brought some producers over for this um, film I was going to shoot a set in um, hiking, like hiking film. And I'm like, we can just go 20 minutes out of the city and you've got everything you need. And they're like, no, no, you, you're just, you're just like pulling our leg. And I actually got them and then we got in the car and it was about 17 minutes and you could just look in every direction, farmland and everything. So um, that's where it's, 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 it's really beneficial. So, but look, I mean, like, I love the States. I spent a lot of time. I miss, uh, I like Whole Foods a lot. I miss it. I know it's expensive, but I like it. <laughs> um, so, um, and I do miss great Mexican food. Uh, so there are, look, um, there are there are great things in every in every place. Um, but if you, you know, uh, New Zealand is is a great is a great place. So I feel very very lucky that that I can make films here. 
And look, I do definitely look forward to traveling. I mean, this film's done exceptionally well in festivals all over the world, and I haven't been able to go to any of them. I know. So, well, that, what does that it mean of, to what does it mean to be here at the Lake Travis Film Festival in the Texas Hill Country? What does it mean to you that the audiences here in Central Texas get to see this? To be honest, what I like talking to you now and and knowing that it's you know there at the moment, um, this is one of the reasons that we do the years of hard work. You know, that 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 I can make a little you know a film quite a wee while ago, bottom of the world, and then if you put in the effort and make something good that it can go all over the world and to, to places. I've never been to Lake Travis. I'd love to go. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully if I, if I make another film, I might be able to come back and, and meet you all in person. Um, but it's it's truly humbling. And I think it's one of the great things about film uh, that, that the film will still work for you, you know, that, that will still get out there and, and be seen and that people are liking it everywhere. Um, and whether, you know, it had its world premiere in China, it did really well there. It's had great sponsors in Europe and in the US as well, so that um, Istanbul it was just in. So um, it's, it's really so gratifying when, when so many different cultures as well, like really appreciate it. But I mean, I'm, I'm just so stoked that, that, that it's there and that, that you're all in, enjoying it. So hopefully, <laughs> and we're, we're um, loving yeah, the film. I just the wish, film I just is, wish is I, beautiful. Yeah. Oh, thank you. But no, I just wish I was, um, as I say, I wish I was uh, uh, over there. I was, I would have loved to have done a big, you know, travel for several of them. And, and um, I, you know, I do miss, uh, you know, not going and having a drink with the organizers of the festivals and stuff. It's one of the great parts, but um, and it's still great that the film can travel. And, and I think it's fantastic that, you know, that, that parts of the US are opening up now and you can actually get out and see movies. So we're lucky in New Zealand, like I've been able to go to the cinema for the last year. Um, you know, I've been very fortunate. So I totally get that it's, um, it's amazing now that other parts of the world are starting to open up, thankfully. La lastly, what is the website and the social handles for your film so we can follow the film successes and follow your great work? Oh, thank you. Uh, I think it's turnofthescrew.co.nz. I'm so sorry. I should actually have that memorized. No, no, um, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it from the festival and yeah, publicize and it. And just, uh, just Google me, Alex Galvin, uh, G-A-L-V-I-N. And I'm on Twitter as well at Alex Galvin NZ. And the film is on Instagram, Turn of the Screw Film NZ. It's on Instagram. Um, and so those are the, the main bits. But um, anyone through you, anyone can contact us through the uh, through the website as well. There is a contact page there. And so um, it's just finishing. You know, it's still on its festival run, and then hopefully we'll we'll get some good distribution after that. I hope so too, because it's such a beautiful film, and uh, it deals with a lot of great stuff. And I know it's uh, it's in the morning there. So thank you very much for waking up and joining us here in Texas. And best of luck on this beautiful film. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.